All right, recording has started. All right, it is six o'clock. I will call this meeting of the library board to order. Okay, roll call. Chair Marie Hoda. Here. Maggie Burns. Present. Luke Curtis. Here. Kyle Davenport. Here. Didi Dina Phelps. Here. And we have City Council Liaison, Chelsea Noonan-Camp. Present. We have Inglewood School Liaison, Devon Williams. Present. Thanks. And excused, we have Vice Chair Gina Olberdeen and Amy Wilson. And um, we are missing Edie Hughes. Staff, we have Director Christina Underhill, Library and Cultural Arts Manager Bethany Lafferty. And we have intern with the library, Laura Marquez. And we have two guests present. Um, your names. Okay. Good evening. My name is Regan Benson. And I would like to provide public comment this evening. Okay. Um, and you'll have three minutes to speak when we do get to that. Thank you. All right, where's that? Well, if you need a okay. All right, um, we need to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Anyone have time to take a look? I took a look, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from right. the last month's meeting. I'll second. All right, with an update to Luke's last <laughs> Yes, I already had. <laughs> All those in favor of approving the minutes from September? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Um, we can have recognition of public comment. Three minutes. And okay. Debbie, can you keep an eye on the time? I will. Okay. Done. If you do. Okay. Uh, do you have do you have a sign up or do you have a no any rules? We just said that it's time and you have three minutes. So okay. Okay. Well, hello. My name is Regan Benson and I am the executive director of Helping Hands for Dignity Coalition. We are a nonprofit addressing a public health crisis. Homelessness. Our funding derives solely from private donors. I am interested in learning about your library community task force agenda item this evening. I look forward to any collaborative, meaningful opportunities for involvement as I and numerous nonprofit volunteers have been providing services to the homeless community in Inglewood for over five years now. As a recognized 501c3 with attorney drafted articles of incorporation that are 100% in full compliance with the Internal Revenue Service codes, rules, and regulations. And we are in good standing with the Colorado Secretary of State. The type of outreach we provide positions us like no other service providers in Inglewood. We are active in direct street outreach, wraparound services, which can also be described as a continuum of care, whereas no other nonprofit or government service provider does or can provide anywhere in the Denver metro area that I am aware of. With me here this evening is our data analysis team lead volunteer, Elizabeth. Elizabeth's role is an intricate role in collecting and analyzing data with our various partner organizations, as well as reviewing latest trends in a wide variety of annual reports to include the point in time comprehensive annual reports so that we have a thorough understanding of the level of funding we will need to secure in addressing severe weather events for our unhoused neighbors. 
she and I also work collaboratively through a multimedia mediums that serve our secondary overall mission of preserving and displaying evidence of potential risk to civil rights violations. Thank you for having us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I was going to say, we, um, James Clinton has joined the meeting. Okay, so good. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. All right. Um, I think we can move on to reports. Is that correct? Okay. And we will do the library statistical report first. Okay. Oh, I'm going to wait for W. Um, okay, so 28 days of service, which is the same as last year, so I'm guessing we had a staff in service in September last year as well, um, and we were also closed for Labor Day, so those are the two days we were closed during September. Um, I think most of that stuff is all pretty stable. You might start seeing a decline in the collection size as we've been beginning a project to run reports from our integrated library system for items that have not been checked out since like the last activity was 2012. Um, and this is actually a project that Laura, our um, graduate student intern, is helping with uh, checking, double checking the shelves to make sure these items are not still on the shelf and then cleaning up uh, our item records. So similar to what we've been doing over the past year with the patron records, um, you'll probably see a decline. I don't know how significant it's going to be, but there'll probably be a, a noticeable decline in the total collection for Anglewood, um, which potentially would have an impact on the overall Marmot collection size. So that's kind of gonna be ongoing. So it might be a slow decline over the next few months. Um, we have, uh, we had a good number of new card registrations during September, and we've recently worked with Marmot Library Network to get an enhanced, uh, reporting, uh, dashboard on our new account registrations month after month. Um, so if there is other cardholder information that you would like to have included in the uh, monthly statistical report, we're going to have the ability to do something like that. So I could, in theory, put in new account registrations and either in formally in the report or just kind of as an aside, I can notate this is how many were Englewood residents, this were non-residents. These are new registrations that haven't been finalized yet. Exactly. They do have a 30-day window to, to finalize their registration. I think that that is really important. We've been talking about like marketing the library and making sure we're getting people in here and to have a way to finally actually piece that out and watch it over time. So it's really important. So you want to have the, that breakdown of the new account? Yeah, I mean- Like in the spreadsheet? Yeah, I think that we might need to expand the yeah. placement of the spreadsheet. I know. The we got it so it keeps small. getting smaller yeah. in print. Yeah. Um, but I think okay. that that's kind of vital data. And we can certainly start in adding it as of October. Yeah. Um, so we'll have just the last few months of this calendar year with yeah. that information. Um, and then we can have it kind of set up for the new year. Okay. Okay. And I will make a note for that. Um, I know that we see, we hear from all of the like departments occasionally. Mm -hmm. Do we, like, if circulation or whoever that is, I'm not sure, like, yeah, like, I think that that kind of data and seeing it on graphs would be really interesting if we could have that, like, once you're in a few months as well. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. And I think Celine has been trying to work on a, deeper analysis of collection performance, if yeah. you will. So like the different sections of the overall collection, mm -hmm. you know, children's picture books, children's chapter books, young adult, adult fiction, nonfiction, the, the, like the audio That's visual stuff. So we can, um, and that might be something we could do on a quarterly basis as a separate report from this. Yeah. Because I think you'd see more helpful information over a longer period of time than month by month with yeah. those. 
because she's been yeah. trying to figure out how to um, organize the information on a spreadsheet and then put it into a graphic as well. Yeah. Okay. I think that the new cards are like more important though. But okay. Yeah. Um, and then moving on, our circulation numbers are pretty good in terms of the physical collection. Um, online use, the digital collection usage is definitely increasing really nicely, which is great. Um, we recently participated in a workshop about online resources and learned that there are so many great magazines that we have access to electronically through our subscription with EBSCO, which is a database um, provider. Um, so I've been working on a project to, and Laura again is helping me with a, a lot of the online, a lot, online resources analysis right now. Um, and I'm doing some restructuring on the website to make uh, a more direct link to those specific periodicals. So um, I'm probably going to be creating a whole new page for magazines separate from the newspapers uh, because we have that many. Uh, that are accessible, which is cool. So hopefully that will, um, online resources, also known as databases, is not something that's currently reported at all in this statistical report. This is just um, items that like check out, like similar to a traditional physical item. Um, Laura and I have been working on figuring out how can we present the usage information on our online resources. Um, and we're also working to promote their existence to then in turn hopefully drive off their usage. So that's kind of an in progress project. Uh, culture passes are still really popular. Board games, and we actually created a new process for um, streamlining board game use in the library because we have lots of people that just want to play them here. So we did create a streamlined process to record the usage of a board game in the library. Um, so that's why we're seeing um, a good use of board games each month. Uh, information services, um, it's actually a lot lower than usual. I don't know if we've just kind of been slacking on recording our interactions at the service desk, but that just definitely seems really low to me. So, um, but the top 50% categories um, account Questions is 16%, uh, supplies is 15%, and supplies again includes passing out snack bags, earbuds, the use of scissors or tape or anything like that, um, and then providing any other resources like clothing uh, that we might have that we store in the adult services office. Uh, guest passes, 8%, and then just general directions, 8%. Oh, let's see. Um, volunteer hours was pretty strong. Um, that did include uh, seven board members volunteering 18 hours at the book sale last month. So thank you. I think all of you present here physically all helped out. I appreciate it. Um, and then we had uh, 15 uh, adult volunteers for 94 hours. And that does include eight new volunteers uh, through the Transition and Englewood Schools Ties Program. Um, it's for Englewood High School students that are preparing um, to leave the school system and are developing job skills. So they come, uh, I think they kind of rotate in smaller groups at different times throughout the week. So that's been really great. They started, um, I believe, at the beginning of September and had orientation in August. Um, Children's programs are good. Um, they wrapped up the fifth summer of doing story time in the park. So that ended in uh, September. And then they, uh, the children's team also delivered the summer reading trophy to Maddox Early Learning Center. Is that what it's called? Early Childhood. So, okay. I was close. Um, and then adult programming. Um, I, I don't know if I mentioned this previously about how the... Um, the number of adult attendance numbers for in-house has increased pretty significantly. And I wanted to make sure I included that, that or it described that that includes what we consider passive programming. So during the summer, that was a summer reading sign up, um, the passing out of snack bags. And I, there's a third category that I can't think of off the top of my head that they were counting before, but it's not really happening right now. I just don't remember what it is. 
uh, I don't remember. Um, but that's why you see that bigger jump in the number of attendants, even though the number of programs is relatively the same, but not lower. Um, 12 incidents in the month of September, and just pretty much on par. I mean, it's still an increase over last year, but most of these are more just kind of, you know, enforcing the standards of behavior, reminding people to not bring alcohol into the library. That's probably the most common one we see nowadays is alcohol. Um, I believe there was a fight that was in September, I think. There was a guy that just attacked another patron. Um, so sometimes it's just stuff that like, doesn't even have to do with the library. So, um, And then our revenues were not as high as I would have liked. The fall book sale brought in only $777.71. We had made six more cents, I would have been going to Vegas. <laughs> um, and then the total book sales for the month, so the, the book, the actual book sale plus our regular bookstore was eight little over eight hundred dollars so eight hundred and thirty so we're still chipping away at that but I think we learned a lot about the book sale what processes work best I wanted to ask um last year our numbers for fiscal visitors were much lower um and I was wondering did we count the number of people who came to the book sale in the physical visitors last year and she now bumped it a little bit this year, right? It probably would have because okay. the September book sale last fall was in the community right. room. So it's not so automatically it counted. Yeah. yeah. So they weren't coming through the library door, which has the people. Right. Okay. So that's that's a good point. I don't offhand remember the yeah. approximate number of people we saw at the right. book sale last year. Okay. Um, I, it's just for my own curiosity, on the very top row, uh, why do we have so many more days of service mm -hmm. this year than last year to date? In 2023, the library was closed to the public from mid-January to mid-March for oh. remediation. Okay, got it. So yes. I I don't think that we counted any, like we only counted the first 10 or 11 days in January. and. We may not have started counting service days until we reinstituted doing curbside pickup. And that took us a couple of weeks to kind of reassemble um, and notify people about. So we might have lost a good two or three weeks of no, okay. like no real service. We maintained programming, but not actual like library service. A little longer ago. But yeah. Kind of <laughs> last year, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. right. Any other statistical report questions? We can move on to the action plan. And if anyone online has a question, just type it. <laughs> um, I didn't have any updates for adult services really. Um, for children's, um, they have been maintaining this books in the community program. Um, and so they had they have materials placed at um, a local laundromat, Craig Hospital, and Movement Fifty Two Eighty, um, and those have been getting picked up, and they replenish those. I think they replenish it twice a month, um, and then they're looking at adding their having. Um, some kind of space that they can leave their program calendar for children and teen events at Craig. Is that um, like a little free library situation? It's like yeah. it's not books that are in circulation. Right. Okay. Yeah. They're they're generally um maintained with materials that have been withdrawn from the library collection. Um and but then predominantly from the donation that okay. we get. So we we kind of split the youth donations between what we put in the book sale and then what the children's team takes out to these community spots. Awesome. Um, and then Kimberly has been working closely with uh, Bishop Elementary School and to plan a presentation to teachers. Um, she actually did that this week um, and then was present at the parent teacher conferences earlier this week at Bishop. Um, she told me that at that conference night, they made 25 new library cards awesome. for kids and parents. 
And then they also did a presentation at Thrive Preschool uh, to the teachers there on the importance of reading and singing in preschool classrooms. So just trying to provide some instruction and resources for those professionals. Um, for circulation at the staff, uh, our staff in service last month, we had um, the Englewood resident that was a recipient of a sustainability grant, Andrew Fourlines. He provided a cooking de demonstration using the new induction burners. Um, and those will be part of our library of things. They're gonna be in a bin with the burner, a pot, a saute pan, and a couple utensils and instructions on how to use it. I don't know if they're putting recipes in them or not. I can't remember. And then um, um, and then um, there will be, uh, those kits will begin being available for checkout on Halloween. And then the following week on uh, November 7th, there will be a, like the same demonstration he did for staff they'll be doing here in the library. We do plan on recording the demonstration and we'll be posting it on the website so that when people check out the kits, they'll kind of the inside the kit, there'll be a QR code and then printed directions for how to view the demo online if you want to watch the demo before utilizing the burner. Perfect. So there'll be there'll be four kits. But I can't work more. Yeah. yeah. And then I think for library operations, I just had a short update about how the strategic plan is underway um, and engagement materials um, and project website are being developed. Um, I believe JR will probably talk about that. And I have an example of the um, engagement materials to pass around when he's um, describing that part. And uh, we're working on doing some pop-up events over the next couple of months to engage with the community, uh, talk about the strategic plan, get people to engage with the um, project site, provide feedback, um, and then we'll be talking about the community task force later in the agenda. Great. Okay. Any questions on the action plan? Um, our budget, we're still at zero. It'll redo in January. Um, okay, so new business, introduction of Barry Dunn Consultants and the Strategic Plan Project. You Can you, like, make JR bigger? I don't know. Yeah, um, you know right there. Speaker, yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, so JR, you will you have the floor. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's great to be with you this evening. My name is JR Clanton, uh, and I'm a consultant with Barry Dunn. And uh, we are the lucky firm that was selected to help uh, facilitate the Inglewood Public Library strategic plan. We're really excited to be working with you all and really excited to be part of this important project. Um, just a little bit about myself. I am um, a library professional. I have been with uh, Barry Dunn for three years. Prior to joining Barry Dunn, I was actually the library services manager for the city of Westminster, Colorado. Um, and so I'm local, so it's another kind of cool privilege to get to, to work with you all. One thing about Westminster, which is somewhat unique, is we had a structure similar to Inglewood, where the library was a division within the Parks and Recreation Department. And so, um, again, I'm just familiar with this type of structure, and of course I'm familiar with uh, the Denver metro area. I live down the street uh, near Rose Hospital, so I'm not too far from you all. Um, I do have a presentation that I'll jump into. Um, if you all have any questions while I'm presenting, please feel free to speak up. Um, but while I'm presenting, I can't see you all. So if you're waving, I'm not ignoring you. I just can't see you. Um, so great. OK, can I share my screen? Yeah, there. OK. Can you all see this OK? Yes. Are you seeing um, the presenter window or are you seeing the presentation? Presenter window. OK. All right. Um, 
Let's do it like this then. Uh, no. Okay. If you click on display settings, you can switch windows. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so just a little bit. This is a real quick presentation today. We only have about five to ten minutes to talk. So the purpose of this is really just to introduce myself to you all, um, to give you an update of where we are in this process, and to um, introduce you to the engagement collateral and let you know that this is about to get underway, our community engagement, and we're really looking forward to continuing to work with you all. So as far as project purpose and goals, um, the strategic plan accomplishes a lot of things because it's really fundamentally two different types of documents. It is a planning document. Through and through, you make a strategic plan because you want to have an informed guide for how the library should invest its resources over the next three to five years. So absolutely, it's a planning document, but it's also a communication document. And it's a lot of the power in the strategic plan is in its ability to communicate to both the public as well as to staff what the library is, what its guiding values and principles are, what it's hoping to achieve and how it plans to achieve those things. So we take a lot of care when we are working with organizations and developing strategic plans to make sure that we remember that the, the document serves these two roles. Um, we take a lot of pride in having documents that are well organized, accessible, um, and visually appealing because a visually appealing document isn't just a vanity thing. It's actually something that increases accessibility because it encourages people to read it. Um, so that's what we are really trying to get out of a strategic plan. And in order to get there, this is the process that we go through. We want to have a strategic plan that's informed from both community engagement and objective analysis. So the way we get there is um, we have a process where we have initial project planning, data requests, um, shared vision and work plan. This is an internal process with Inglewood staff. Once we've done that, then we get into what we call environmental scan and engagement planning. This is where we're working through developing a comprehensive engagement strategy, um, inc incorporating DEI efforts into our planning process, uh, conducting an environmental scan, which will look at environmental factors that are affecting the library. And that doesn't just mean uh, climate and weather, that means what is the situation with the city? What is going on with partners? What are community needs? Demographics and drive time analysis will certainly inform future decisions and planning efforts of the library. And then finally, benchmarking, figuring out what types of peer libraries make sense to compare certain performance metrics at Englewood with. Um, so these are this is where we get a lot of the objective data that will inform um, the strategic plan. Then we move on to community and internal engagement. This is where we are engaging the Inglewood community as well as Inglewood staff and important community partners um, on what the library could be doing to best serve the community. This is where we get that input that a lot of time is more qualitative in nature. This is where we're where we're hearing from people and hearing from staff about their opinions of both the strengths of the Inglewood community and library um, and the needs of the Inglewood community and library and the role that the library can play in either enhancing those strengths or addressing those uh, deficiencies. Once we have all of that, um, that's where we then are able to develop a strategic plan that again is informed from the objective analysis and the qualitative engagement. Um, and it's an iterative process. And once we finally have agreement on a final strategic plan document, uh, we get it created, um, it's designed, it's printed. Then we take the next step of working with Inglewood staff on how to implement it. 
on how to use this document and keep it relevant over the next five years. And we do that through an implementation workshop and also through the accompanying what we call action plan, which is an internal action focused document that um, basically lists the specific actions that will staff can utilize each year to implement the strategies identified in the strategic plan. So I guess an important thing about this timeline is that this is the process and these are the steps, but it's not necessarily to scale. The process will run from August through April. And for those of you that are a little bit more detail oriented or at least want to see the timeline and a project management format, here it is. This is a Gantt chart and we're right here in the beginning of um, or middle of October at this point. So we've been doing a lot of work on our environmental scan, demographics and drive time analysis and benchmarking. We've been designing the marketing collateral surveys and comment cards, and we've been developing the comprehensive engagement strategy. And then we're just about ready to kick off external um, outreach, the social pinpoint website, which is the online engagement tool, and then of course, internal engagement. So we're right about here in the process. So community engagement is a huge part of this project. It's probably one of the biggest parts of this project. And so we have a ton of effort going into both the planning of it and a lot of effort going into the execution. So you're about to see a lot of Barry Dunn staff and a lot of Inglewood Public Library strategic planning collateral coming out. But just to give you a brief overview of what we mean when we say community engagement, we mean being present. Aside from me, who I live in Denver, we also have two other consultants who are local uh, to the Denver metro area who plan to be present in the Inglewood community during the engagement period, doing what we call intercept engagement, which is where we talk to people in uh, commonly frequented areas. We'll set up a table and talk to you. Engagement stations where maybe we have a formal um, engagement station at say the library or a rec center, some sort of uh, city location that, that has a lot of foot traffic. Also leveraging existing events. One thing we've learned is if we have an open house for libraries and we say, hey, we're going to have an open house, please stop by and give us your opinion. You're not necessarily gonna get a lot of people to show up. Um, unless you do something like use crisis language, like save the library from being closed, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna be honest about this. Um, and finally, focus groups, leveraging existing relationships within the community to reach specific populations of people that we haven't necessarily spoken to. So these are the types of engagement we do. In terms of the engagement brand, we've developed this engagement um, brand for this project. What is your wish for the library? Um, and this is a short link to the library's webpage where you can access it. We've got collateral. The These items, we have bookmarks, we have comic cards, we have these little business cards, um, and everything is translated into Spanish. Um, and so we will be printing these and distributing them. So when you see them, please uh, share them with your network and please encourage people to give us feedback. The other thing we have created is uh, what we, it's a social pinpoint. It's an online engagement tool. It's a website dedicated to both informing the public and collecting information from them about the future of Inglewood Public Library. And so um, this is a screenshot I took of the social pinpoint page, but it's got these three key components. Again, you can learn about the project, what we're trying to accomplish. There is a brief online survey tool and it's legitimately brief. It's targeted questions specifically meant to inform us about priorities for the library while not overwhelming people with 20 or 30 questions. And finally, it has a budget tool. This is a uh, exercise where people can distribute 100 imaginary dollars to different types of priorities for the library. Again, it just gives us another data point. So that's where we are. Um, we've got the social pinpoint site up and running. We have the collateral off to the printer and we're going to start pushing this out and being present in your community very soon here. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you and 
uh, learning more about your community and, and how this library can best serve it. So thank you, and I'll now turn it back over to Beth and, and you all. Thank you, JR. Does anybody have any questions at all? Well, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. oh, Chelsea is. Oh, Chelsea is. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm just wondering, are there plans to cross pollinate this effort with other uh, communication efforts within the city? For example, cross linking it on Inglewood Engaged or putting it something in the Citizen Magazine. How is staff thinking about uh, getting the word out that way? There is going to be an ad in the uh, forthcoming Inglewood Magazine, and it's that. Um, collateral marketing collateral that uh, JR just showed it'll be in that uh, theme so that that's already planned and included and it's going to be in the magazine section not in the activity guide part um, and then I've already I, I have been communicating with the communications team about the ad space in the utility bill um, they do those in months opposite from the the magazine going out so the next opportunity for that will mail out in December. Um, so I already have plans for submitting that to communications at their deadline in November. That's great, thanks. And JR and his team have been in contact with the city's communications staff members directly um, to, to talk about stuff um, and just kind of coordinate a few things. Debbie, can you read what Big just sent in the chat? He said, is there I anything for the- a, Is there any communication for the school um, as to Parent Square or anything like that? Um, I, we do have the intention to bring materials to the schools. Um, as far as providing them content to put in like an e-newsletter or physical newsletter, I, I don't know what might be upcoming. So if you guys have suggestions. There's a newsletter every the first Thursday of the month. Okay. Um, that Joanna sends out with all the community things. Okay. So you could reach out to the superintendent. Okay. Great. Thanks. First Thursday? It's the first Thursday. Okay. Yeah, the deadline is like, a little bit ahead of that, but you're welcome. I feel like it's the On 25th track, so. of the prior month. That's yeah. what we did when we did the book sale. Yeah. So yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Well, yeah, thank you. That's a good reminder to reach out to the schools. There's also a mini magazine that communication puts out. Oh, what is that one? That that's what goes in the utility bills. Okay. Oh, um, that's what yes. that is. Okay. I yeah. thought it was a separate. I don't receive, so I haven't seen what it is. That's, yeah. We have the Citizen's Guide that's the, the thicker magazine that has all the programs yeah, and city right. stuff and in it. Yeah, right, magazine. Correct. And then um, the utility bill, when the Citizen's not out, that's when you get just, a, it's like a okay. two, four page okay. type thing. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you for getting everything in Spanish as well. I think that that's something that Englewood, the city of Englewood could do as a do better with is engaging with Spanish speakers. Like we have a huge population of Spanish speakers at the school, so uh, I appreciate that. And the Social Pinpoint website also has a translation Great. thing that you can select the language you want to view it in. Great. Anyone else? Thank you, Jr. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right, so we can move on to the community task force library board liaison um, conversation. Yeah, so the community task force, like JR was outlining in the presentation, will be a group of a cross section of residents, businesses, nonprofits, um, volunteers, school, parent, things like that, people who use the library. Um, and I hope this doesn't disappoint you too much because we're not talking too deeply about what the task force is going to do. This agenda item is to 
select or have somebody from the library board volunteer to be a liaison from this board on the community task force. And we just need one person to do that. Gina emails me that she would like to that person, obviously, just is open to whoever else. But uh, I'm speaking on her behalf that she would really like to do that. I mean, Gina, Greg, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I need to be very Okay. So that would be um, Gina will represent the library board. And then just to kind of give a little bit more information about like how this group is, the task force is being grouped. Um, with the guidance of the consultants, we were kind of given some broad categories to think about. Um, so we have current partners, nearby jurisdictions, volunteer groups, uh, religious groups, political power, athletes and coaches, friends of, of friends, which I take that to mean like a friends of the library group, which unfortunately we don't have. Um, locals, small business, big business, need it most, youth organizations, outdoor enthusiasts, health and safety, neighborhood groups, and civic organizations, and then kind of just other. Um, so at this point, um, some of the community partners and um, people like businesses in the, these different organizations that we have so far identified include Movement 5280, All Health Network, and the PATH team, Arapahoe County Housing Navigators, some of our library volunteers, uh, a library board member, Wellspring Church, All Souls Church and School, um, library patron, and uh, people who would fit into the older adult category, um, and then just general library patrons, a parent family, um, a family that represents neurodivergent uh, individuals, so parents that represent homeschool, uh, Craig Hospital uh, Foundation, Nixon's Coffee, fellow traveler, Englewood Schools, Englewood Chamber of Commerce, innovative housing concepts, um, one homebound delivery patron, um, and for Chelsea, we do want to earmark a spot for an Englewood council member. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be you, um, but if that's not, um, I don't know, if, if there's not somebody that wants to do that, we don't have to, but we, I did earmark a spot. And then we've also earmarked a spot for a representative from the unhoused community. We have a lot of folks here in the library regularly. That may be um, a spot that rotates based on the availability of the individuals, um, but we are um, holding space for some, one of at least one of the unhoused patrons in the library to participate in this task force. And then Ms. Benson, if you are interested in serving on the task force as well, I'd be happy to give you my contact information. I can follow up with you with more details. What about uh, like Mally? We don't have any for this task force. Uh, we weren't including any of the internal kind of stakeholders okay. um, because we will have a staff task force that will be um, comprised of library staff members. And that's where we might pull a few people from different, uh, you know, some of the other divisions within PRLG or possibly other departments in the city. Are the, is there age diversity though in the group? In like, like the community? Yeah, seniors. Do you have, you didn't, oh yeah, sorry about the families. And so I have, well, because we have a couple of our library patrons that are also fit in the category of older adults. Wonderful. Yeah. And uh, then we have just like younger adults, average age adults. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also adults who have children that they bring to our library. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Family. I would also encourage if possible a like, High school student or two. Sometimes they're better in pairs. I know Kimberly has wonderful like students who she knows, and um, I'm leading another committee, and we were encouraged strongly to have two because then they open up more. What about Swedish? Um. We selected Craig initially because we already already have um a established contact with somebody at the Craig Foundation. Oh, yeah, so, and I do have sort of like a secondary list should some of these um, individuals or organizations decline participation. So I do kind of have a depth 
of you know choices um, to fit. And just to address Maggie, we didn't select Sacred Grace because you're already on the library board. <laughs> um, so we thought we would still be able to connect to you and your group through this um, this forum. So and yeah, to be clear, that's perfect. Oh, <laughs> to be clear, oh, we can only have three. <laughs> we can only have one library board member because of the open meetings of it all. A clarification question. Um, is the task force the same as what JR called the focus group? No, it would be different. Focus groups are um, likely to be kind of more, um, I think there's a plan to have at least one virtual and then one that would be like an, almost like an open house community meeting where people can come and kind of have an opportunity to share information and feedback. Um, and I think those will probably be like more of an open invitation, I think. Um, the task force is intended to meet two times in person and then probably one virtual meeting. Um, the community the, and the first community task force meeting currently is planned for uh, Tuesday, November 12th. Okay. And we'll likely be here at the library. Hotel. Chelsea has her enough for again. Chelsea. I was just gonna say, I'm happy to serve. I'm also will not be offended if you guys would like another perspective from council. So just let me know on if you would like uh, to open it to the full council and see if there are volunteers or if you'd like me to sit on it. I'm happy either way. So oh, whatever. It may make sense to have you on it since you're part of the library liaison. Yep, yep makes sense. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I will follow up with Gina on this just because uh, she emailed me to, or well, I'll just give her this. Okay, and I have, um, I'll be sending out like a formal invitation email um, that I had the help of JR who, um, composing. So um, I'll be working on that tomorrow. I was just sending gonna, those emails out. They, she's not available that day. We might be okay. reaching back out okay. ahead of that for a backup. Sounds good. Okay. Any other questions, comments? All right, uh, the November and December. Yeah, we want to talk about those two dates um, because they're fairly close to the holidays. So I um, wanted to see if we would have quorum and you all would be available. So in November, it'd be November 21st. That's the Thursday before Thanksgiving. And then in December, it's uh, the 19th, which is prior to Christmas, the week before. So. Up to you all if you want to have uh, the meetings at that time or if you'd like to look at moving them, um, as well as uh, we have canceled the meeting, I believe, in December before just yeah. due to people traveling for the holidays. So it's a discussion we'd like to have today so we can get them on the books or um, make any changes we need to otherwise. Um, I did also want to mention that I believe Barry Dunn wants to plan on doing sort of a workshop with the whole board at the November meeting. Yeah. So currently they are available November 21st, but JR said his schedule is pretty open for November. So there's a decision to change the meeting. He should be able to accommodate that, but. but that's a whole week before. Yeah, it's a whole it week. Is. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bill. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I'll be here. I'm good for both. Bill. I'm here for both. I, I would suggest sure. December, non have to December. Okay. We have November and then not have this summer. Well, let's see what our business needs are. We aren't going to have like a regular meeting in November. Um, if we have a quorum, oh. we'll still have the meeting. Uh, we can play it by ear. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So we'll plan November twenty we'll first for yeah. uh, that board meeting. It'll be primarily the consultants here yes. uh, for that, and then we'll discuss mm -hmm. at the end of that meeting if you want to have the meeting in December, either change the date or keep it the same or yeah. cancel the meeting altogether. Okay. I would say let's hold that date. But okay, keep you got it. Everyone, that's that date <laughs> that is around you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if we decide to cancel, that's what we decide. Perfect. Okay. Anything else? All right. Uh, there is no old business, right? So staff's choice. But did you? Have I don't really have anything. I'll be honest. Um, I've just been working on the strategic plan stuff and some other 
you know, just kind of internal yep. documents for the library. Um, thank you. Oh, I already talked about the magazine. I'm super excited about the magazine thing, so. I really like the brand. Yeah, that's, that's totally right. <laughs> I have to brag on it because I just had a, a total light bulb yeah. about the like, what's your wish with the dandelion? And so Very. they implemented it in a really lovely way. So it works well with the branding. Yeah, I like it's the color. Oh, palette. yeah. And we made sure to give them our color palettes yeah. and stuff like yeah. that to coordinate with the city and library. So um, <laughs> I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be really good. And uh, just looking forward to the feedback we're going to get. Yeah. Thank you. Trunk or treat is this coming Saturday out here at the Civic Center Circle. Um, if you have kids, are you coming? We're leaving for Mexico in the morning. All right. <laughs> Maggie, are you coming? I know you have a little one. Yay, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll see be you there. there. Excellent. I'll be out there with a tablet and the engagement site. Very going in and trying to get people engaged with that. So yeah. perfect. So that's that's all we've got. All right. Anything for board members' choice? Um, Chelsea? Nothing from me. Sorry to be remote tonight. I'm traveling for work, but really excited about strategic plan. Great job, guys. Okay. Devon, anything from the schools? Yes. Uh, so I'm also traveling for work. Um, I am one of the 178 delegates for CASB representing Inglewood schools. I'm also proud to be on the CASB Connect um, Dues Task Force, which is the meeting I'm also participating in at the same time. <laughs> um, the Inglewood Middle School and Leadership Academy school merger conversation is going to be coming up next week on Thursday, the 24th, between 4 and 5.30. And then uh, the Long Range Planning uh, meeting, which the chair of this board also chairs, uh, is coming up at Colorado's Finest on the 6th uh, to focus on Finest's needs and uh, overall school finance. Thank you. Marie. <laughs> I am busy. <laughs> um, all right. Anyone else? Thank you all for being here. And we'll see you in November, if not sooner. No. Thanks. Um, we're adjourned at 652. It's amazing. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye, everyone.